what is something you have learned recently or been thinking about or grappling with recently? The fact that um, human error has a spotlight shining on them. Um, and it made me also look at myself and go, yeah, what are my errors that I need to work on to be a positive contributor into the world now? Um, also, just leaving the world better than what I found it has been in my mind a lot. Like the spotlight is on. So I start changing a lot of that I think and start being positive a little bit more. How do you best learn or develop yourself? Describe your learning process. Yeah, man, watch a lot of videos on YouTube. Life is so much easier nowadays. You can literally type anything on YouTube. You can Google stuff. Um, there are podcasts. Um, I enjoy reading, so I've been really fortunate to have that as something that I enjoy. So, yes, after a busy day, I can't wait to get home and just lie on my bed and turn on my laptop and watch something. Um, and, and that's not series or movie, no. Just watch something about current affairs, current issues and all of that. Some people call it news. I'm like, I don't know. It's just watching what's going on, what's going on around so that I'm not so disconnected to what the world is feeling. So, yeah, that's how I learn. Internet, books, podcasts. On that note, what's a favorite book that you would recommend someone read? so many <laughs> oh man i want to i want to be christianese and say the bible because in it there's so much life lessons and lots of history in it it's a book that opens a whole lot of questions like you can you will have a lot of questioning about life politics religion through that one simple book it just does that you don't have to read it as a christian person you can read it as a non-christian person just read it as a book and go this book of history has in it stories and stuff that's enough to make you ask questions and don't hold back ask real life questions so that's for me the number one book of reference for me even today uh try read it as a non-christian person even if i am a christian but i try to put myself in the shoes of somebody who doesn't believe and i go that is terrible and i ask questions and i'm fortunate to have friends who are students of the Bible to help understand. As a follow on from this question, there were four books that I found in an Instagram post of yours from quite a while back. And so I'd love if you could say which of those you would recommend someone read first. So the first one was the Mandela biography. Um, yeah. Second one is called Endgame. And yeah. the secret talks and the end of apartheid, right? And <laughs> eight days in September was another one. And then the last one was the reason for good. So I'm not sure what all of those books are about, but if you were to choose one of those from your memory, this was a while ago, admittedly. So you may have read these a very long time ago. So I must just pick one out of those. I mean, maybe if you want to go with more, but, but those were four two. that came recommended. Okay, let's go with two. <laughs> what would be your two? Eight Days in September and Mandela's book. So what, what is Eight Days in September about? Yeah, man, that's the turning point of the current um, ruling party. That's when the faction started happening. No, I don't, I don't, let me not say nobody knows, but a lot of people didn't know that South Africa was actually on a good path um, in the beginning of President Mbeki's um, leadership. And um, then, you know, corruption, corrupt comrades started happening within the ANC alone. Yeah. Um, and that started a whole bunch of things. Like they, they were gunning to impeach him just so that they can ensure that they can um, cause havoc with corruption in the country without any accountability. So that, it was a very good, I mean, it's written by a reverend in Soweto who has lectured me a couple of times. Mm. Um, Frank Shikani, he was a dear friend to my father um, as well. So you, you, you know it's truth. It's, it, he, it's stuff that he's, he experienced as the advisor in the presidency at the time. It's a good one to read if you're interested in South African politics um, sort of atmosphere. Get in it and you'll see this is when it actually turned for our politics. 
So, and then the Madiba one is cool. It's Madiba, come on, read yeah. about Madiba. <laughs> He's got some good things to say. The most influential person to your journey and development? My mom and dad. Don't mean to sound like, but it's now lately when I think about it, I'm like, oh, it's my parents have had some influence over me because of how I think. I'm very free spirited person, um, very secure. I'm keen to see changes in society and all those things are what my parents um, had in them. Like literally, it's just weird how that just happened. So I'm like, when I look back, I'm like, yeah, they actually did. You know, my mom is one of the strongest people I know. She can, she has long suffering, that lady. Like she, she can hang on through tough times, you know? My dad was, was the voice. Things have to change and we have to do it now and we do it. Uh, the smartest guy I know in the world. I, I, his, his brain to me is incredible. So yeah, those are the two most influential people in my life. I don't know about the, the rest now when I'm looking at the world. I'm like, I don't know. Everybody has something to add to the pot, I guess. Yeah. And then what is a quote that you enjoy or look back on often? Yo, that I look back on often is just live. <laughs> that came about with my childhood best friend <laughs> in the township. Like a lot of times we can make issues out of nothing. Some things are just non-issues, just gotta live. And also it applies to when we need to make issue out of things that matter. We gotta live in them. Just live, live. And currently is the one that I gotta leave the world better than I found it. What would be your tip to teenage Ambu? I'm a procrastinator, man. I would have told the kid to not procrastinate so much. I have a suspicion that if I didn't procrastinate so much, <laughs> I probably would have been a lot more effective than I am. <laughs> I suspect that. I don't know. I probably that's if that if anything, I'm not just trying to search, but yeah, I'd say that. Stop procrastinating, bro. Yes. <laughs> Something that you do for fun or as a hobby to clear your mind. Clear my mind. Golf has become one of those, believe it or not. We just found a cheap golf course and we cracked their, their cheat code. <laughs> if you play after three o'clock, it's a hundred bucks. <laughs> so why not play once a week or twice a month? We try to go for once a week, but twice a month is like a requirement between my best friend and I, Andre. So that's, that clears the mind quite, like, it's amazing how that happens. It's just with your mates that you work with, and we don't talk work. We just play the game, laugh at each other, tease each other. It's cool. Soccer, Wednesdays is one of them. But one that's readily available, I suppose, is your questionnaire. That's just something I gravitate to quickly. Sleep. It doesn't, doesn't have to be, but okay. Sleep. Sleep, son. <laughs> Sleep. Just get back. And if you had a bad day or whatever, just get under the covers and sleep. When you wake up, you feel so good. You're like, oh, it actually didn't matter. It didn't matter that it was a bad day. It's like, it happens. You slept it off. <laughs> That's me. I, I can sleep, son. And then I'm going to ask you to add not one, but actually two songs to the Perfect Road Trip playlist. Yes, yeah, so you're asking somebody who loves music. 500 Miles by that band, the white people, I don't know what they, that is cool. You have to play that song. How and I Met then, Your Mother reference. <laughs> and and the second song, the second song that I'm going to ask you for is, is I'd like to get a local song on this playlist. So, oh yeah, I, I actually had one for you, let's, dude. Let's get a, a local song on this playlist. What, what's one local song you would add to this Perfect Road Trip playlist? I'm going to go and find it on my iTunes because it's always readily available. It's, a, it's by a band called Sangomota. Can you say that? Sangomota. Can, yeah, you, Sangomota. can you spell that for people? S-A-N-K-O-M-O-T-A. -O -O now or never, the song's called. Now or never by Sangomota.
to have we get Come on. And this is such a good message. It's now or never. Wake up and go do it. It says, wake up, Africa. Go and do it. But it's such a cool beat. Listen to it, bro. It's good.